And I sit there and I go walk. I'm like, ha, 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 boom. And my hat hits something <laughs> and comes off, right? You know, well, you know what my hat hit for it to fall off my head? Randy Johnson's left hip. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 10 of Mound Visit. I'm one of your co-hosts, Casey Honigbaum, alongside Justin Arsenault and the 13-year Major League veteran and all-star, Jason Grilly. We want to remind you guys before we get into today's episode to subscribe to the channel, Top 100 Sports Network. Follow the show on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. All of those are at Top 100 Sports Net. And if you just want to listen to the episode just want to listen to these podcasts follow the show on spotify and on apple Podcasts, top 100 sports network leave us a review there it really helps us out and now without further ado let's get into today's episode all right guys welcome back another incredible edition of mound visit hump day wednesday and we got a view that nobody gets to see from the lens from the clubhouse I mean, nobody knows who my friend right here is. Jimmy Ingle, clubby for the Florida Marlins, and probably washed every jockstrap in Miami from 1998 <laughs> to 2002. <laughs> he missed the World Series and hell of a bonus that are life-changing for clubbies and staff during those years, and uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Grew up in South Florida Sunrise. Uh, he would take over Mark Smith's locker on a getaway day, and people wonder who Mark Smart Smith was. We'll, we'll revisit him. And uh, ran a side hustle to detail the finest street rods money Ooh. could buy in his tenure with the Marlins. Uh, probably could restring a catcher's mitt in two minutes and 27 seconds. If, what a if, resume. If his fat fingers, if his fat fingers to misdial an old associate and come up and connect with me 20 th- years later. Welcome to one of our finest frontline people, a fireman, Jimmy Ingo. Bro, thanks for being on the show. That's my intro. You look like you're in a better spot than we are, man. Is there anyone prouder than than me right now on that introduction? And by the way, <laughs> this, this is truth be told, I did wash about every jock strap in Miami <laughs> between the year 98 to 02. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, so I thought it would be great. Years. I thought it'd be great to bring somebody from my past. And let's let's just you tell the story because you're the one that created the reunion here of how this this episode and many other conversations since prior to this even happened. Tell us about your fat finger and how you <laughs> not butt dialed me, but yeah, your I mean, finger it's, got it's in the way and dialed me yeah. instead. So it was, you know, I always like to keep in touch. This and that. I had a couple guys in the, in the big leagues, their numbers still, you know, and, and whether or not I text them or not, if this is going back 20 years ago, the last time that Jay and I actually spoke, this is probably 03, wow. 04, I, I believe. And I was texting a buddy, and I just go down, and the O and the I are next to each other. So I type GR, the O and I, and I'm like, and it says Grilly. And I don't go through my Gs a lot. I don't know a lot of people with with G, you know, and um, I'm like, what are the odds of him having the same phone number? So I said, you know what, let me drop him a text. So I text him, hey, whatever it was, hey, is this Jay? This is Jimmy from the club or whatever. And not even, uh, probably 15, 20 minutes later, yes. Well, I can't see who's texting all this other stuff. So the questions he was asking, he goes, look, send me, maybe this could be him, send me a picture. I'm old. Losing my eyesight or whatever, you know, or you know, eyesight and memory and all this other. I said, oh, no problem. So I sent him a picture. I said, here's me back in the day, and here's me now, just you know, slightly fatter. A <laughs> couple and, and spread I, tables I, in, dude. You're you're looking good still, still man. Forget it. In. Forget it. So I look. I always say I, I look like a fireman, just fatter. But listen, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love that you call me because, like I said, old stories, reliving, tracing your steps. But I got to say, just on the on the figuring out, you know, we've all gotten that text where it's like, 
who is this, right? You know, who is this? I even got a lady who asked me on a date recently. She says, I said, who is this? And she goes, well, I got your number off of Google. I said, excuse me? You're asking <laughs> yeah. me on a date. I said, well, now we're getting creepy. Yeah, so that's not good. I, I, I bet <laughs> you should probably Jimmy look into that. Yeah. <laughs> if Jimmy Angle, you know, was, was, I had to make sure it was him. You know, that's why I was asking. So, uh, yeah, very, very good, man. I mean, and now a fireman. I mean, that's much respect, dude. No, no. We kid around about we we self deprecate because that's what makes it fun. I mean, we get to do some stuff that's ungodly in MLB and and uh, like I said, I can't wait till you just tell some of these stories. We'll have us in stitches. I thought this was going to be a lighter side to some of the stuff we done. We just had Gary Sheffield on. We had my buddy Scott Brown from Vanderbilt telling us some really good stuff. So now I just felt like, hey, we have some clubhouse banter. We do some stuff behind the scenes and. You're the perfect candidate to have on, and maybe we should do this a little bit more often, man, because it's a lighter side of sports that we all definitely need. Oh, absolutely. And, and so funny, because, so I got there in 98, and you know you know the way it goes. It's not like you apply for a job, hey, this is what I want to do. <laughs> you know, let me let me apply for the clubhouse guy to clean underwear and, and wash clothes all day, but it's it's all who you know. And I ended up getting – I was working at Publix at the time in 98, and um, I got a text – I'm sorry, a page – page and mm. the number was pager. A five number. wow we're a dating pager. ourselves dude yeah pages were expensive they were four dollars a month and the page <laughs> was it was um it was a 305 it was three i'll never forget this 305-626-7443 which is wow I, dang I, I, wow I, I you remember have, it to this day huh imagine the, stories, imagine the stories in the arsenal if i can remember a phone number so i end up calling it back from Publix, which was long distance which i had to get permission for okay and, um, and hey, this is uh, Paul, my buddy Paulie that worked in the clubhouse. He's like, hey, we need a bad boy for tomorrow. I'm like, what? And he's like, what time? yeah, um, we, need a bat, we need a bad boy. I'm in. And, and I'm like, okay. Um, I thought it was a joke. You know, this is before Ashton Kutcher's punked and all that other stuff. You know? <laughs> so I said, uh, listen, sign me up, coach. Yeah. What do I got to do? Oh, just be down here. It's 1 o'clock game, opening day. Be down here by like 830. I said, oh. I'm in. And there it was, dude. And it was just phenomenal. And the best part is, is I'm driving an 89 Camaro, right? That was my first car. And go. at this time, I'm, I mean, I'm 18 years old. And I actually drove into the player's parking lot. Because I didn't, you know, <laughs> you didn't what know. do I do? Yeah. Announcing do your presence with authority. Pop? Am I going to park in Gen Pop? Yeah. No, I'm going to park in the player's parking lot. Whose yeah. part, who's, who's spot did you take that they made you move? I'm sure you took somebody's spot that was pissed. You know what? It, 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 there was. I didn't know what spot it was, but I want to say because after I pulled out. because The owner's the space? That, out, <laughs> not him. No, he flew in. Remember? Hi, Zinga. That's right. He flew That's in. Right. Um, whose spot was it? It might have been. Might have been Sheffield. It was either Sheffield or Benia. It was a big because it was close. No to the, way. It was close to, Sheffield and Benia were all there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, you, yeah, didn't but, you, know, you didn't know. You didn't know. You just elevating guy. your game, you buddy, you know. Guess Dress, what? Guess what? Dress her where you want to be. I didn't care. I'm here. You know, they got right. go, whoa, where are you going? You announced oh, your sorry. presence with authority with that Camaro. Did, did you have the black smoke coming out the, the <laughs> tailpipe? <laughs> Rolling well, in? I had, the, I had the T-tops off. There you go. I would have been excited, man. An eighteen-year-old kid going to the show in a different way. I'd be on two wheels, uh, <laughs> so I can only imagine what you felt, right? Uh, the the the, the, the adrenaline. Top, two kicker tens. I don't even know what was popular. I think it might have been twelve gauge that was popular back then. <laughs> you know, it's funny hearing so. this story because, and I'm, I'm ha happy to have you on, Jimmy, because myself, in case you've never seen the inside, and the majority of people in the yeah. on the globe. Haven't seen the inside of a major league locker room. Mm -hmm. We're vicariously living through you yeah. right now, and everyone wants to know what it's like to be in that locker room. So this is a great spin, and Jay, great call with having Jimmy on just to get like the spin on. So what happens in there? Yeah. And I'm sure Jimmy, you got some wild stories. Maybe some are too wild <laughs> for this show, at yeah, least. We're not doing any name drops. No to, name to drops. Out. No <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. No Jose Canseco tell all stuff. It, yeah. that, what stays in the clubhouse stays in the clubhouse. You know, but we can't get stories with abbreviated versions. Yes. And, yeah. and of Jimmy, course. Jimmy, you got like what are your I don't know, top three? Like some good stuff that uh 
that. Well, first of all, what was like your wow? Uh, like something that happened when you were in there. You're like, wow, I'm in a major league clubhouse right now. Well, first of all, you know, you, you get it's starstruck, you know, and at the time this was, you know, we're, we're four months removed from the first world series, you know, yeah. and, and, and the first wild card world series. Yeah. Right. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, yeah, the Marlins right. the first one, you know what I mean? That's when it was introduced. So it was exciting. And, and so the first time going in there was to give, um, I visited a couple, probably about a month earlier, my buddies, Hey, I got to go down there and clean up. Blah, blah. So here it is October where they win. I went there and probably it was like November to go by or December or whatever. And the clubhouse was the same way. They left it the same way they left the World Series night. Oh, so sick. it wasn't even cleaned up yet. So it sick. smelled like champagne. I was going to say, it probably didn't oh, smell great. It smelled like feet and pampers, dude. It was, <laughs> it was, it was bad. I'm surprised it, it didn't tear out the carpet. But it, what, what's more painful than probably that smell? I mean, as a player, I'd be pumped. You're at the right place at the wrong time in a sense because – as a clubby, I know you guys prepare being on the inside for the champagne when you're about to win and you cover the lockers and the, the, you roll out all that champagne and beer and cigars and everything. And you missed a, a hefty, hefty player's share. Oh, we got another guest yeah. in the background. Twice. That's why, yeah, this, this guy's a little excited. I'm going to put him in the house here. And a ring, man, which was the first big hood ornament. It was like the, at the time, it was the biggest hood ornament, uh, I think, 97. Mm. And when that came out, people were like, oh, my God, now the Atlanta Braves won one, and uh, it's got headlights on it and stuff like that. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. But nonetheless, man, I mean, like I said, not to not to sell sell your experiences short. We got to bring your dog on, dude. He's next. <laughs> yeah. He wants, he wants oh, camera time. Here's a, here's a good one. So I grew up a diehard Braves fan, right? I mean, I'm talking, they're the only team on TV, TBS. I was a huge, huge Dale Murphy fan. My dad and I, my dad worked for Delta. Um, he still works for the airport, actually, to this day. And we used to fly up to Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium, a few times a year and fly back the same night. So it was pretty cool at a young age. So I grew up a Braves fan. My first dog in seventh grade, his name was Justice. Okay. <laughs> nice. So this dog, right, this dog I have right now, um, um, is his name's Murphy. His nice. name's Murphy Dale Engel. So it's keep it. So with that being said, I was going somewhere with this. So my favorite part, and then I'll get to the whole the clubhouse thing, was when the rosters expanded, the forty man roster, right? It was always around pennant chase, and I'll, so here it is. I got the Braves; they're in the prime still at this point. Yep. And you, you see, you you know, you meet all these new guys and guys that are that are stars now and retired and Hall of Famers and. It was just unbelievable to be right there with every time it came down to a wild card spot, that team ended up playing the Marlins for four years in a row. Mm. Whether it be the second to last home stand or not, it was always there was some type of heavy, heavily involvement. I mean, look at the, even the Maguire Sosa chase with the home runs. I was right there, saw yeah. number sixty one, two, three, and four. Wow, it was crazy. it was absolutely phenomenal. Awesome. You know? So it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. But as far as the the wow you get starstruck, you know what I mean? You really do. And then after a while, you're like, wait a minute, I'm really here. And then I love baseball so much. I'm like, it was time for me to be a sponge. I learned so much down there just with conversations. And a lot of the players don't even know what they do teach just by speaking. Yeah. It's insane. Interesting. It's a different world. Man. It's a different world. And, and it's funny because there's a couple things that I coach down here, travel ball for a couple of years that I actually use from there. Yeah. You know, whether or not it's too advanced from or not, it's just telling them like a slight introduction. So it's not foreign territory when they get to high school or whatever the case may be. So it's a, uh, it's, it's actually pretty interesting. That's well, really pretty cool. cool. You know, you, you, you told me a, a cool story. Like I said, just we, there's so much time we could probably run three episodes with all the stories that you have and, and, and the, the tenure that you had as a clubby. But I thought it was something to cool because you were such a young guy and, and you guys do rely on tips. So you get paid a little bit here, but having guys take care of you. And one of my former teammates, A.J. Burnett, when he was there, recognized that you were hustling, detailing cars, which was a big deal, especially in Miami, right? You don't want to roll in with a bird shit all over your car and whatever. <laughs> you know, you got to look nice like you're coming with you a clunker. It's part, of your, it's part of your ego. It's part of your getting ready, like, you know, feeling you look good, you feel good. It's all that as a player pop the chain, whatever. And uh, 
tell us a little bit how AJ took you kind of under his wing. I thought that was a great story about how he recognized, hey, man, this kid's hustling. He's working his, his balls off and made sure he gave, flipped you a couple extra Benjamins just to take care of you, man. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, well, you know, it's pretty cool because to, to go back a little bit, when he was when he got, actually got called up, I was at uh, Nova Southeastern, and um, and I got a page again from the Marlins clubhouse. A pager. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the clubhouse manager at the time, Wally, um, he goes, "Hey, I need you to. Can, are you able to pick someone up from the airport?" I said, "Yeah, no problem." Who is it? This guy AJ Burnett. I said, "All right, no problem." So huh. you know, here's here's the number, blah blah blah. This is the flight. So I went and picked him up and uh, dropped him off at the hotel. He said, hey, dude, you hungry? I said, I am. You want to go to Outback? I said, I do. <laughs> no problem. We, me and him went to the Outback right there, 17th Street, Jay, if you remember that. 17th Street and um, right going to, headed east to the beach. I mean, who, do, who doesn't love that blooming onion, you know? Mm. Oh, God. And I go to pull out my wallet. I never expected hungry. anything, you know? And he goes, hey, you pull that wallet out again. <laughs> we'll never do this. Wow! Cool. Oh, wow! So, and that was about four years before. So um, he he came out. Um, this was oh five or oh six. I believe it was oh five. And said, "Hey, dude, I appreciate it." And handed me four hundred bucks cash. Wow, so, that's awesome. See, I you know I think it's cool. Like, and I just talked to AJ, who's up here uh, to throw out the first pitch. Russ Martin and him opening day uh, coming up here on Friday. Uh, the Pirates home opener. And he's up here. I got to I gotta try to give him a call, see if I can see a couple of my buddies. But I told AJ, as I talked to him recently, you know, we play with so many guys and, and you have to be alpha all the time, right? The egos and the alpha and the intensity. Mm-hmm. It's really because of the intensity. Guys, you don't know where they're locked in, when they're letting their guard down to be, to be more civilian-like and barbecue with you. Um, the vulnerability, nobody wants to, you know, say, Hey, I'm having a weak moment and I know you need me out there. Cause I got to be intense and win a ball game. But I said to AJ recently, I'm like, dude, it's kind of cool. Now I wish that we had more time to get to know each other on a personal level. And that sounds kind of weird because you don't get to know everybody you play with and shit. I was packing my bags every, every other week <laughs> because I was playing a different team. So, you know, just, to, just the time it takes to go to guys with breakfast or who you wind up rolling with, uh, it was just cool for me to hear a couple of AJ Burnett stories, um, only because I've played with them for I don't know, two teams. They're two different teams, but with my Florida stint, it was very brief uh, there, and then I got to know him a little bit more with the Pirates. But uh, yeah, it's cool to hear good guy stories as well, because I think uh, sometimes athletes are personified and viewed a little bit differently. But like I said, it's great to have a clubby on here to know the insides, how you've helped them out, how they helped you out. And, 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 you know, continue the discussion, man, because I know you're full of these types of stories oh. and things that you've seen, man. Well, Grilly, well, you I actually – sorry, Jimmy. I, I want to ask just to piggyback off that, but Grilly brings up an interesting point when he talks about kind of knowing, you know, what kind of a mood almost that guys are in. When is it like being a clubby and, you know, you're interacting with these major leaguers every day, did you have to kind of learn how to – or when was the right time to approach a guy to ask him about something or maybe approach him to just talk, you know, just to, you know, kid around with him or something like that. And then know kind of when to not do that and when to leave guys alone. I, I don't know. I'm sure there are oh. stories associated with that. But what was your experience with that sort of thing? You know, I, at some time, you know, we call it in, in my buddy Tim McNabb down here. He played with a little bit with the Mets in the minor leagues. And he, he came up with something coaching high school baseball where it was, you know, don't wear sweatpants. And every, all the kids are like, what? What are sweatpants? And they're like, we don't know. They're long pants. We don't know. No, they're comfortable. So don't get comfortable. Mm. Don't start wearing sweatpants because it's short little stints of success. So with that being said, you kind of relate that to I still have a job to do no matter where I'm at, whether it be in a clubhouse or at the fire station, whatever, I still have a job to do. So I knew, you know, play baseball my whole life. You know, and, and I know when when is the when the right time is. You know what I mean? I mean, the guy comes up and, you know, there's different getting lit up in the first inning versus, you know, pitching your, your butt off for eight innings and then some guy giving up in the ninth, which we're all human, it happens. You know what I mean? So you kind of stay away. But then again, the way I relate it is this. Once the game's over and the music's going, because there's always someone with the control of the clubhouse, it's a perfect time to talk to them. Any victory. And that's the thing I noticed is these guys were teammates. You know what I mean? And, and although 
there are the individual stats and we, you know, we all root for each other and everything else. But there was that time where, Hey man, great job. Do this. Hey, thanks for bailing me out. Came in. And remember, this is before the most to me. And I think Jay and I talked about this, the most underrated stat, a hold. I'm like, what's an H Mm. I'm like, man, now they're giving these guys credit, which was, which is pretty nice because Mm. man, those guys are, are the, the save leaders as well, you know? Yeah, no, I, I used to, exactly. And I used to turn the spotlight. I've done everything from the front, the middle, setting up to closing. And when I closed, you know, everybody wants, the media wants to talk to the closer. You know, they're the closer. Sometimes I would turn it back. I said, the save was in the sixth or seventh inning when this guy came in and did the job. And, and those inherited runners did not score. So yeah. you are, you're a hundred percent correct, man. That, that, that's an underrated stat. And I think those guys that do a great job of holding inherited runners, I mean, you can look at ERA and, and that type of thing for a pitcher. Uh, but that's a, definitely a stat that I, as a middle reliever, I prided myself on, you know, holding the game, making a save right. in the middle of the game. Because usually even in the middle of the game, those five to three or three to five, or I don't know, now it's 17 to 14 games. I don't know, in the middle of the game, uh, you're holding the, that game in the balance. So you got a chance to, to swing that, that necessary game that matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing is, is the, with the clubhouse, too, you know, it's to have a baseball, you need umpires. Mm. So I met every, about every umpire, man. We, we used to bring them the spread about in the eighth inning, get them situated. We used to go from the home side to the and the visiting side of the umpire room. And this, that. so but let me tell you something. Those umpires look so serious on TV and there's a there are a bunch of characters. <laughs> I mean, personalities. I think you need to have one to the extreme to even deal with what they deal Thick with. skin, man. Rhino A little skin. bit of everything, man. Yeah, a little did bit you, of everything, man. What, yeah. Did you have interactions with, uh, they call him the cowboy, Joe West? I did not. Okay. I did not. Yeah. I mean, I met him a couple of times. You know, just, it was quick. Yeah. You know, but it was always yeah. dropping the food off and, and, and then, you know, clean up after whatever, after the game. But um, they, believe it or not, they, they like to hang out there for a while. You know, oh, really? They're, they're totally common. Oh, yeah. At the at, at the clubhouse, they had a nice little little room. Well, I so. know I know. Speaking of the the tie in here, we talked a little bit last night about one of the jobs and probably an interaction with the umpire is whoever rubs up the baseballs, right? In the mm. Mississippi mud, we were talking about Mississippi mud, trying to figure out where it comes from. So I know you had to rub up a million baseballs in your day, I'm sure, right? A shade over, <laughs> a shade over. <laughs> And, and you, didn't rub up the, you didn't rub up the away balls, I'm sure, either, right? You rubbed those up no. a little less. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every, listen, every, it's funny. Every pitcher, every pitcher liked it. I mean, you know, it's like the guys that, that were, I don't know, I don't want to say harder throwers, you know, mid, uh, mid-90s mid or whatever the case may be. They liked them darker for the grip. The guys mm. that were more the, the off-speed guys with the tighter sliders and the 12-6 curveballs, they liked it lighter because they were a little slicker. So you really had to get that feel for it, and um, and do it. But they let one kid do it normally because he he really was a bad. He he rubbed every baseball in in spring training. Wow! When at this time was in Vieira, so mm. the players loved it and all this other stuff. It's it's very exciting. Listen, I want to show you something real quick. We can't send virtual gifts, but we can do visual gifts. <laughs> you ready for this? See it. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. So. Regular pair of shorts. You remember those? The Florida Marlins. That's vintage. Oh, look at you that! Can barely, you can barely see it. The the, the 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 whatever the material is hanging on right there. <laughs> this is yeah, such a tip, this is such a typical. You can barely see it, dude. Thing to do. Sure. I still have my you basketball barely... Lemoyne basketball camp T-shirt from '96. You know, yeah, dude, that's all listen, we do is we hold on, see... hold on to our old sporting gear. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You can barely see it, but it, you know, I, it used to fit, but I can barely get it over my cankle. So what I do is I keep it in my drawer for days like this. So take a look, see. So I don't know if you were there, Jay. Do you remember this shirt? Defense. Okay, hold on. I kind of remember. Yeah, I do remember that. Twenty-seven so ounces no more. Interesting. Yeah, so I have to go this, through this, my vault to see if I still have that shirt. Yeah, that was a. I don't know who the. Um, it was the infield coach at the time. Oh, here's the funny part. Ready for this? Look whose shirt it was. I don't know if you can see it. Fox? Did it say Fox? Andy Fox. 
Oh. Fox, dude. You're bringing out yeah. some, some names. All right, so I want to go back to the Mississippi mud stuff, though, because we talked about it. Does anybody know where the Mississippi mud comes from? Oh, I know. I, I thought it was in Ohio. It's not Mississippi. It's definitely it comes not. from the New Jersey side of the Delaware River. Wow. And this one guy, and- according, to, according to Google, yep. each year – Jimmy, we might have to bring Jimmy Bintiff. He visits the mud source and returns with a thousand pounds of it to store over the winter and sells it the following baseball season. So I don't know if MLB's hired Jimmy or if Jimmy's still working on it, but he did a lot of digging to start the. That's insane. Right? Wow. Insane. That's insane. Hey, Jimmy, is there like a a clubby group or like a clubby insider group that you guys like? (laughs) So you guys Facebook page. Page. Facebook page, you guys like connect or when you were going through and doing all that, were you talking to other clubbies and you know, what they see what I they're would, doing and you, you know, I, I still talk to one and, and funny, funny story. I'll make this long story short, you're gonna laugh. His name is a buddy of mine that lives local. His name is Nick Cirillo. And the reason why I'm saying this is he's already on YouTube, okay? He was on David Letterman. He was fired from the Marlins for the whole milk incident. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> for, for which incident? What incident? The milk. The milk incident. Uh-oh. He, he oh, was, I don't know. He was, bet, he, was, he was whatever amount of money it was that he oh, couldn't no. drink milk in an hour without vomiting. Well, he lost like everyone does. <laughs> and disgusting. he actually got fired from the Marlins. And he's actually a good buddy of mine that lives very local, right? couple miles on the road i we still talk and oh we still God. talk about that it's a whole youtube video jay i'll, I'll send you the youtube video send the link you were gonna yeah, laugh yeah. On letter. we'll, we'll, put, yeah, we'll put a letter. link to that in the description of this video for sure yeah. oh my god this was national news and here's the thing i was witness <laughs> i love it love it did you try time. no 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 <laughs> i don't try to get into any game i'll lose smart yeah, there you go no smart what job and I'm out of the Mississippi college. mud to milk. We'll get to the shower shoes. We'll have the fungus on the shower shoes next. But. <laughs> what's what's Jimmy? What's a an interaction that you had? I know you talked about that interaction you had with AJ Burnett. What's another interaction you had with a player? Maybe a couple others that that really stuck out to you. Whether it's funny stories, you know, heartwarming stories. What are some things that I know we we want to do some lighthearted stuff on here. So show, share some funny interactions that you've had with, with players that, that have stuck out to you over the years. Well, it's not always the home side. Were you on the visiting side ever too? So your interactions oh, yeah. share with your away side. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so I had this thing. I, I would go um, – we usually got a break about the seventh inning, seventh, eighth inning, roughly, okay, depending on how where the game was. It always ended up in that area and um, that time frame. And I would go on the third base side – where all the cameras were, and I would watch a game and this and that and, you know, BS with different people, et cetera, et cetera. So rain delays, of course, you know, in Florida, I mean, they don't have them anymore because it's <laughs> a dome. I mean, it's like every other game is a rain delay. I would go in the visiting clubhouse, or I'm sorry, the visiting uh, bullpen, and um, whatever players, I'd just start BSing with them, you know. And I was fortunate enough to talk to a few. Greg Maddox, one of them. Daryl Kyle, another one which you want to talk about these guys, they're just on a different level, man. I'm like, you know, ask them about, you know, curveballs and sliders and this and that. And then it's funny because Greg Maddox was like, well, why? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, why do you want to throw that pitch? He's like, look, if you're going to pitch, it's not scripted. What do you do to that? Bat? It was just, it was incredible the way he was talking. And Daryl Kyle the same way. Hey, how do you throw the curveball? Everyone knew about Daryl Kyle's curveball. I wanted to know, you know, and, um, so this one in particular time, this particular time was Pedro. I think when the Reds were in town, Pedro Bourbon was in the um, in the bullpen during a rain delay. And mm-hmm. I was sitting there BS with him, left-handed pitcher as I was. And um, just he's like, hey, look, instead of talking about it, let's just make it happen. I said, make what happen? So at this time, it stopped raining. They're getting the field ready. The tarp's coming off. The people are coming. The, uh, the fans are coming down. They always crowd around that little section on the third base side. And he caught a 40-pitch bullpen for me. No way. <laughs> Did you not, man. And and he's like, you got to do this. He's like, look, man, your ball moves everywhere, this and that. You got to do this. He's like, uh, do you play? I said, yeah, I play college, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then um, 
And it was just, it, I, I don't forget stuff like that. That's you can't. awesome. It's impossible. And here's the funny part. In 2001, I played in the Penta Ball. You're going you're to like this one. In in uh, the Texas Louisiana League, which is Rio Grande Valley, Texas. Okay, wow. so it's like Edinburgh, Brownsville, and um, so next thing you know, I'm in a bullpen and I'm making a team. How I don't know what, how. I always listen. I was always the best guy in the dugout, never the best on the field. I'm proud of that. So I'm in the bullpen down the first base line on a home game, and I see this guy. I'm like, man, he it looks familiar. Now this is a year removed from talking to Pedro Borbone. Well, here it is, Pedro Borbone Senior oh, lived wow. there and had season tickets to the independent, which he didn't need independent ball team that I was playing on. And I sat there and said, man, you, you know, I work for the Marlins, blah, blah, blah. So I thought it was pretty neat. So about two days later, they're like, hey, Jimmy, you have a package. I'm like, package? The Marlins players sent me, whoever it was, I, I still don't know to this day, they sent me a, a whole box. Uh, sliders, socks, a glove, nice. pants, shirts, like the, the dry fit black ones that the, it was the under, it was the, uh, away um whatever it was the the uh under you got Arnold hooked stuff. up you got hooked Dude, up yeah pack is the marlins and the, and then it was a note hey we're seeing what you're doing keep going that's nice. awesome. wow that's awesome yeah so and but these guys are like hey yeah here i am i'm five ten a buck eighty buck eighty at the time like who the hell is this guy i mean <laughs> i got like fourth and half picks that you know what i mean that i'm in the clubhouse with in yeah. my clubhouse saying who who is this guy with a marlins bag <laughs> the old marlins traveling bags which i still have it, nice. uh, it, it's it's incredible, dude. It's like paint yourself. So very proud. And you know what? It's it's stories I share with everybody, and to, especially my kids. Love it. A little bit better than you know talking about staying in. The, you got to travel a couple times. I'm sure staying in the five star hotels, mm. uh, ordering chicken tenders late night off the uh, Four Seasons menu. Right. <laughs> your camp your campfire stories, barbecues with with your your fellow firefighters, man. I'm sure. They listen to you quite a bit, and just hysterical when you when you come unglued with stuff that, uh, like I said, you can maybe speak a little bit more candidly than we are on air here. We're not out to air out anybody, but man, uh, it's, it's so funny. Tell us the, too the uh, story I wanted you to touch upon when you, you were a maniac in, in BP, shagging in BP, right? Oh. And you, ran, you ran into somebody, you bumped into somebody when you were trying to be uh, Ken Griffey Jr. at the oh, wall. No. <laughs> yep. So, so this is now. This is put. You got to keep in mind the Bat Boys, Clubbies, the players. That they're all wearing the same thing: the shorts and the shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to match them. The shorts that of you course. got there, right? Those shorts. That's what oh. you were wearing. Those right Look there. It. <laughs> Book it. So, I'm on the bucket for like probably 45 solid 45 minutes. No problem. Running out of this. Okay, now I'm gonna twitch. This and that. Oh. So then. um I'm in left field. I'm like, okay, well, here it is. This is my debut right now. You know, this is my debut. Let's get pumped up. So, fly ball, crack. I'm like, oh, I'm camped underneath it. Camped underneath it. The ball goes 30 feet over my head. I'm like, you good. Whoa. First of all, it's embarrassing. So, I, of course, you're going to take a look at the 90 people in the field. Hopefully, no one saw that, which is untrue. So, I look, and it's, it's Dave Berg. And Dave Berg goes, he, he's laughing. And he goes, <laughs> not that easy, is it? I'm like, Ugh. It's not. It's not. So then after BP, we're all running in. And I'm right in the middle of the pack, whatever. You know what I mean? Just jogging into the, the first base side where the clubhouse was. And there's this little kid hanging over the, the railing going, hey, 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 asking for my autograph. And the dad goes, hey, hey, Johnny, don't ask. He's a nobody. And I <laughs> I lost it. And the thing is, the, the dad's right. I was nobody, you know? And I probably would have signed it anyway. I was so pumped up. You know yeah, what I mean? So that guy would have traded spots with you in a second, dude. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Believe you probably it. saw your performance of the fly ball, and he was like, this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you, yeah, you totally absolutely. redeemed yourself, right? Because you dove into Randy Johnson at some point. Is that who it was? Is that who it was? Yes, yes, yes. So – you know, the, the home God. side, visiting side, opposite sides of the stadium. This is go, <laughs> listen, whatever I say, I, I speak the truth. This is true. So I'm going into the visiting clubhouse and, you know, it's double doors. One of them always just opened. So I'm, someone said something to security, whoever it was, and I started laughing because you see these people every day. I mean, 81 times a season, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I sit there and I go walk. I'm like, ha, 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 boom. And my hat hits something. <laughs> 
and comes off, right? You know, well, you know what my hat hit for it to fall off my head? Randy Johnson's left hip. Oh. <laughs> guys, guys, an Amazon. <laughs> I mean, his legs were five eight. Yeah, really. I mean, you're you know? tall. So how how much taller is he than you? He's he's five six inches taller than me, oh right? Oh my god, god. Lord. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's six ten. Yeah, six ten. He's handing the ball off to the catcher. Yeah, from right. the mound. It's insane. <laughs> it's <is laughs> wild. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, the, the guy kills birds at will. Yeah, you that's right. I mean? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Doesn't get more famous than that. Oh my god. Nope. What it? Nope. But I want to ask, but be, before we let you go here, I think um, part of the cool thing, and you kind of mentioned it. You talked about talking to you know Greg Maddox, and you know how those guys are just different. Was there? What's a, a you know a situation or an example that stands out to you? You know, besides that. That really, you know, you can kind of put into words how different Major League Baseball players are than your average baseball player. What is it that you saw? You know, you think about I think about younger kids listening to this show. What's something that you see day to day or saw day to day that separates major leaguers from, you know, your everyday amateur baseball player? Well, I I think that's pretty easy. And let me relate this to this. There's people get private lessons, right? Mm-hmm. Private lessons. And, you know, they pay hundreds of dollars or they, whatever the case may be and expect, expect not an overnight change, but expect not to do anything for the other six days. And then we'll, we'll pick up right where we left off. When in reality, it's, it's no matter how much money you spend on lessons or whatever the case may be, Johnny's just going to be as good as Johnny can be in reality. In the major league baseball side of things, these games are at seven o'clock, okay? Seven o five. They're play half the players are there at by noon, wow. doing what they got to do. You know, it, it, it's not necessarily thrown, but whether it be, my God, I remember seeing Trevor Hoffman. Trevor Hoffman was he would run thirty minutes before every single game. Wow. And I, I I saw this and I asked, said, man, does this guy do this all the time? That dude was out there with shorts, running shoes, no shirt, headphones, thirty minutes before every single game. This guy. He's not pitching for another six hours, and he's already getting after it. So a lot of these guys that showed up, it's just not, you know, it's not, hey, man, look, 7 o'clock game, it's not those days where, all right, 5.30 show, let's stretch and throw and get out of here. But it, it really is the work they put in. But a lot of it, it's, my God, I mean, look, guys work hard, but it's God-given. God given. Yeah. A lot of it is. You know what I mean? It, it really is. And, 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 I mean, it's just insane because it's it's one of those things where it's the socks go on, the shoes go on. Still, they're different level. I mean, yeah. different Driven, routines, discipline. Right? You know, yeah, yeah. Consistency is one of the best. Is probably the best word to, to describe it. Yeah. And to quote Bull Durham, if you win twenty in the show, they'll call you colorful. If you have fungus on your shoes, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> your shower shoes. Yeah. Love it. Oh yeah. yeah. You've oh, seen a lot of La La Luches, La Luche, Nuke La Luche. There's there's a dying there's a there's there's tons of them and man I, we should have him on the show again Jimmy and maybe we yes, should we even should. start a Facebook group to start a Clubhouse Dudes uh, fan page and uh, these stories are epic there's stuff that tells that nobody knows about I got a, I got a script as I shown you I've I've got a Netflix series I think it'd be funnier than any baseball movie or uh, TV show that's, that's that's attempted to talk about what goes on behind the scenes, man. You've had an unbelievable lens for the time you got to borrow baseball, and uh, like I said, putting out fires now, dude. So all the saves, I, I, this is as close as I have much respect. This is as close as I'll ever get to firefight in Toronto. Made me an honorary fire oh, chief yeah. up go. in Toronto, which was pretty cool. But no disrespect to what you're doing, man. I mean, you've been in. The real deal, saving people and saving lives. Oh, that's cool. Tell us, tell us what else you're doing. Tell me, tell me, give us a shameless plug about Liqua Vita and uh, you know the Media Twist group. Uh, we, that's how we also connected. You came and came full circle with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my my wife, my wife was a fireman too, by the way. So oh wow. Unfortunately, yeah. After, yeah, after about 14 years, we didn't we met that we met at a softball tournament years ago, and then she ended up getting hired at the same department. And um, that's when we started dating. So I scooped nice. her up. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I fooled her, man. You, you tricked know, we her. We married. Oh, 
Listen, I, I, I fooled her because she we got married. I had like four and a half apps. Now I have one big one. You know well, what I mean? You so learn, I got her, you learn I some got stuff her. in the clubhouse, right? You learn yeah, from the boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So my wife was a fireman, too, and she ended up um, after about, I think, 13 years, she she slipped, fell out of the truck, shattered her kneecap, she needed to be rebuilt, torn ACL, oh, um, MCL, surgery, doctor didn't sign her off. Moving forward, my buddy Sam Tejada, who owned the CEO of Liquid Vita, um, he had this thing. He came up with IV therapy, got legs, ended up retiring from the same fire department, and kind of said, look, Blake, we'd love to have you, my wife. And she started off as an IV therapist over there and um, down here in Fort Lauderdale and kind of just worked away, corporate man, uh, corporate uh, manager, I forgot what the, her title was, but now she's the project and logistics manager of Liquid Vita. So she opens up all these stores which start off as one franchise. Now there's nine nationwide. So there's nice. three in New Jersey. So that's the closest to you, you know, Naples and um, San Antonio, et cetera, et cetera. So now, um, and Sam ended up retiring and, and he does this full time. And myself, what I do is I actually sell kits to doctors. So all these infusions, I talked to date doctors nationwide. I got about 400 of them and nice. kind of got scooped up. Cause you know, down here we work 24, 48, you know, um, and I always had, Detailing business. I had a lawn business. I ended up getting my hip replaced. I had to sell it. And I said, yeah, I get can't tired, do dehydrated. And the heck, if you um, do get a, get a hangover, you have a good barbecue, yeah. you get a couple hangovers, and you get rejuvenated yeah. with yeah. a little nice IV treatment, oh, man. You're you go. back up. You back up. It's a world of difference, man. World of difference. And, you know, it, it's just a close knit, and it's like a clubhouse, just like the fire department. You know, instead of, you know, 20 guys, 24 guys, you got five that you, that you stick with, and you, st- yeah. and you stick behind them. So that's the biggest thing, man. Baseball players are the best hires for fire department. It's a true story because there's no better place to be than the dugout. There really isn't. Amen. So love that. Amen. That's a yeah. great way to end it off. I love that. Jimmy, yeah. we really, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us on mound yeah, visit. Man. And uh, it's like really said, I mean, we say this with all our guests, but I think it's really true in this, in this instance, because I'm sure we haven't even scratched the surface with some of the stories we can tell. So I'm sure no. we got to have you on uh, in the near future. We'll bring you back for sure, man. Like I said, yeah. awesome time, dude. And this is the PG 13 version of Jimmy angle. <laughs> <laughs> this is PG. It's been a long, it's been a long mound visit, man. Go, go get your time off. I know you just got off shift. Thanks for joining us. Go kick your feet up. Looks like you got a, some pool time in your, in your future here. So go enjoy, man. Thank you. And Thanks, thank Jimmy. you for what you thank do, you, man. Jimmy. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode with Jimmy Angle. A little bit of a different spin on, on the Mound Visit podcast here, but nonetheless, just as entertaining, I think, as any guest we've had. And from what he's told me, he's got, uh, you know, a, a Rolodex of, of stories uh, to run through. So we're going to have to have him back on in the near future so you guys can get some of those i know he teased he's got a good story about Derek jeter so i think we definitely want to hear that one um but before we guys let before we let you guys go follow the show top 100 sports network subscribe to the youtube channel right there for all of the video podcasts if you just want to listen subscribe to the show follow the show on spotify and on apple Podcasts. leave us a review there leave us a rating and a comment it really helps us out a ton and if you want more content if you want to let us know about maybe some guests that you want to see on maybe some questions you want answered on the show, please let us know on our social media channels. You can follow all of those at Top 100 Sports Net, Top 100 Sports NET, all those the same on Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.